calling through your data with serial. That is removing bad data that you don't want to include in your final stack. That could be from your image going out of focus slightly during the night, clouds rolling in, a handful of different things. This is something that we've always been able to do within serial, but I think most of us that were using it are the ones that are doing all of our pre-processing and our stacking manually. But you can also do it if you're using a script such as the OSC pre-processing script. Once the script has completed, you can go through and still call through all the data and just recreate your stack again. So I'm going to show you how you can go through your data today and exclude the frames that you don't want. Afterwards, I'm also going to show you how to modify the existing OSC pre-processing script so it doesn't actually create the stack for you at the end because you don't need it if you actually want to go in and exclude frames. So let's get to it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. All right, so what I'm gonna show you today will work with any of the pre-processing and stacking scripts that, from Serial that you may be using. In this instance, I have a stack open that was created by using the OSC pre-processing script. And just to show you, if we jump over to my working directory, there's the stack that's currently open from the script, right? As well as it created a masters folder and a process folder. The process folder is where all the master stacks are created for the calibration frames, where it calibrated your light frames, where it registered your light frames, and then, like I said, ultimately created the final stack for us. So this is the directory that we need to be working in in order to use the plotting function within Serial. So to do so, the first step is to set your working directory to that process directory. So I'm currently in IC417. I'm just going to double click on process and then click on open and then verify up top here that I am in my process directory. Next step is to come over to my sequence tab and then click on the search sequences button. This will load up all the sequences that are within that process directory. The one that we're interested in is our registration sequence. And you can tell that it's a registration sequence because it's preceded with an R at the beginning of the sequence name. So we're gonna select that one. If your screen is green like this, you can come down and just do an unlinked auto stretch just to calm it down a little bit for you. And now we can jump right over into our plot tab. So what we're looking at here on the bottom, you can see it says frames. So from one to 305 and the left hand side, it's showing us from 3.59 to 7.75, which is our FWHM, our full width half maximum. The graph has sorted the frames for us from best to worst. So you right away have a nice visual indication of what's going on with all the data within the sequence. And as you can see, my best FWHM is at 3.59 and the rest of these are acceptable. But then all of a sudden I get a huge spike all the way up to 7.75. So even though these were all included in that original stack, I would probably want to exclude the ones over on the high side here to possibly get an even better result with my final stack. So before I show you how you can exclude or include your frames using the graph itself, let's take a look at how you can visually just look at each and every one of your frames if you so choose. So down in the bottom right corner, we have a button that says show hide list of images. If we click that, and this is all of our images within our current sequence. You'll notice that not only does it have image number 14 highlighted, but it's also ticked as the reference image. And it's highlighted because it's also open in serial right now. If we look in the top right corner, you can see we have image number 14 open. So you could, just so you're aware, if I decided that I wanted to use 18 as my reference image, I could select on image 18 and then tick the box. And now that is my reference image. And again, top right corner, you can see it loaded that image for me automatically when I made that change. So I'm going to click back on 14 and set the reference image back because I'm happy with that one. And let's just go over what we're looking at here. So on the right hand side, under the select column, you've probably already figured out anything that's got the blue check mark means it's going to be included in the final stack. If I was going through my images and I decided that I didn't want image 19, I can unselect it. Puts an X through the image so you know that it's not going to be part of your sequence to be used for the stack. And the same thing, I can just continue on. Just left mouse button click to unselect or reselect it. You can also use your space bar to unselect and reselect. So whichever you choose. If I just wanted to call through all this data and just visually take a look at everything, I could start with image number one at the top and just use my down arrow key on my keyboard and just go through each one of the images. Just give them a quick look. Now I'm not going to go through all these because there are 305. So that would, you know, take a decent amount of time to look at everything. 
but just want to make you aware that you can do that so you can visually go through each and every one of these and make selections based on what you see and whether or not you want to leave it or remove it along with individual selecting and unselecting you can hold your control key down and you can do individual frames wherever in this list that you want and then if you come up to this button here and click it it'll unselect what you had highlighted and clicking it once more will reselect them same thing but instead of holding my control key down if i held my shift key down selected image number six and then say number 12 it'll select those two and everything in between and then the same thing i could unselect them and reselect them if you're going through this list and you made multiple selections and came up and unselected everything and then you decided you wanted to reset quickly back to everything this button right here if you click it will allow you to include all the images so now i've got everything reselected for me uh, same thing the button to the left of that one if i was to click that i can say exclude all the images now let's remove them all from my frame list and i could go in and individually select the ones that i wanted to keep so we're going to start with everything selected and we'll close our frame list box for now and come over here and talk about the graph. Like I said, default, it comes in with frames on the bottom and FWHM on the top. Now the full width half maximum, this jump up here could be for a number of reasons, most commonly because you started losing focus at some point in time during the night. So the full width half maximum of your stars were detected to be larger. We can also change the values. So if you look down here, we have X, which is set to frame, which is our bottom one here. And we have Y, which again is our FWHM. We have other options in here. So I can go with the roundness of the stars, the weighted full width half maximum, the background, which the background would be the, the brightness of your background. So maybe some clouds rolled in and you would see it in the graph that the background was getting brighter. So it's an easy way for you to exclude those frames as well as a number of stars. Same thing. Clouds could have rolled in and some of the fainter stars maybe are no longer in that frame compared to the other ones. So you see that number of stars start to drop. So you have a handful of different options to be able to make your decision on what you want to keep or exclude in your final stack. Now, the way you do that, if we just want to do a simple exclusion, is the tops of each one of these points is actually a frame in your sequence. So if I was just to right click on this one, I have two options. First of all, I can say show frame. So it'll load it up for me. Highlighted in the frame list and you can see top right again, it's loaded in the serial now. So after I loaded that, if I saw some anomalies in there that would make me not want to keep this frame, then I can do the same thing. I can right click on top of that peak and I can say exclude frame 58. So now there's an X through it. And in the frame list, the checkbox has been taken away. Now it's also been removed from your graph. So if you inadvertently click something and you want to bring it back, you can only do that through your frame list. So if I wanted to bring back 58, no way to do it over here in the graph, but I can put my check mark back. And you can do that with each frame that you may want to remove from this graph. And you can see as I right click and say exclude, if you watch this peak, it actually goes away, right? It, it takes it out of the graph. It's no longer in our plot, but you can see that it's been removed in the frame list. So again, we're gonna say include all, and that's fine if you just have a couple that you wanna knock out, but maybe you have quite a bit of frames that you do not want to include. So you can do a group exclusion or a group inclusion if you want. So we'll start with the exclusion. Let's just say I don't want anything included that is over my 5.6 FWHM. So I can just draw a selection box around those peaks in this graph. And by the way, the box is adjustable so I can move it around. I can grab the top, bottom or sides and make adjustments that way. And now if I right click within the selection, I can tell it to exclude the selected points. Now you see that the plot graph itself has totally readjusted because I removed all of those frames that were within that selection. Go to my frame list and we scroll around. You can see which frames have actually been removed just based off of what we were seeing. Didn't even have to look at the images. I just know by the numbers, I don't want those included in my stack. So we're gonna once more, let's include all of these and show you up here with the 7.75, if I was to right click, like I showed you before and say show frame, you can see it included this frame in my stack, even though this, whatever this light reflection is, I believe I have a friend that shoots with me once in a while. I think maybe her headlamp may have, or my headlamp for that matter, who knows? Shouldn't blame her, right? May have shined into my scope at some point in time during the night. But so come down towards the bottom, there's 304, there's 303. You can see I have 
a handful of images here that were included in the original stack and this would have an effect on this area of the image because I would never want to include this in my final stack so that's why I would select it and exclude it like I showed you you could do it the opposite way as well so instead of drawing a selection for exclusion I can draw a selection for inclusion so we'll just do it the opposite we'll draw my selection point around everything that's below the 5.6 right click and say only keep points within selection so now we basically have the same result as we did before, except we chose which ones we wanted to keep versus which ones that we wanted to exclude. So either way will work. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can create a scatter plot with this. So if we leave our Y set to FWHM and we can change our X to, let's say, roundness of the stars. So now we've got a nice scatter plot that is showing us how round our stars are, right? It says one is round and our FWHM. So based on that, we can do the same thing and make a selection around frames that maybe we want to exclude or frames that maybe we want to keep. So very powerful, it's very useful. Really don't need to go through and look at each and every one of your images. Once you understand what the plot tab is showing you, just by the numbers of what you have selected, you're able to exclude the worst of the images based on the measurements of the data. And once you have that set, now you just restack your image. So we're gonna come over to the stacking tab and just make sure that you have the default settings set here, which is the average stacking with rejection, additive scaling. We're not going to recompute or do faster normalization. Pixel rejection is Windsorized Sigma clipping with low and high set to three. So everything at the defaults. And you can see right here, it's telling us that it's going to stack 294 images of the 305 in the sequence because those 11 missing images are the ones that we just excluded on the plot tab. Now, you don't have to stop here. You can tighten this up a little bit more by clicking the plus button and you can tell it for example based on roundness the best 90 percent of the images and you can see our 294 dropped to 272 simply by adding this roundness factor and telling it to stack the best 90 percent of the images and you can continue on you can add more conditions hit the plus button again maybe we want to also include a background check in there too so based on the brightness of our background stack the best 98 percent Again, it determined that and it dropped it down a few more. So now we're at 248 of the 305. So it's optional for you to do this, but it's just another way to really hone in on the best data that you had for any given night. It's as simple as that. Now we're ready to stack. So we are going to enable output normalization, RGB equalization, and force 32-bit output. These are three things that the OSC pre-processing script does as well. So just to keep things the same, we're gonna enable them. Now, you can leave this file name as it is. It's just telling you that it's gonna use your sequence name, which if we came back to sequence is r underscore pp underscore light, and it would use that as the file name and then append it with the word stacked. So two things about that. First of all, that's not a good file name for your final stack. So we're gonna change that. But the other thing I need you to keep in mind is we are still in our process directory. It's not going to cause a problem, but if I was just to hit start stacking right now, it's going to use the sequence name for the file name, and it's going to create that stack in my process directory. So we're going to change that. Like I said, it's fine. You can do it that way, but I just wanted to point it out. So we're going to name our final stack the same way that the OSC pre-processing script does as well as put it in the same folder location as that script would do. So to do that, and this is right out of the OSC pre-processing script. This is what we're going to put in for our file name. So the, the beginning part of it, the dot dot forward slash, is telling it to go up one directory from the process directory. So it will not create the file in the process directory. Instead, it's going to create it in the IC417 directory. And then the rest of this is, it'll include the total acquisition time in seconds, like we're used to seeing, just like when you run the OSC pre-processing script. So once that's in place, we'll just hit start stacking. And this is gonna take a few minutes because I have 305 images to get through. So I'm gonna pause the video and we'll come back as soon as it's finished. Okay, so the stack's complete, and the final stack was actually opened up automatically for us, something that the script doesn't do, right? When you do it manually like this, it'll open the stack for you when it's finished. So if we jump back over into our working directory, you can see this is the original stack that we had from running the OSC pre-processing script, and this is our final stack after we've excluded images that we did not want to include using the plot tab and the conditional statements in the stacking tab. So one more thing before we wrap it up there, if you want to save a little bit of time when you go through the process that I just showed you,
you, you can actually make a modification to the OSC pre-processing script, or like I said, any of the other scripts that you're using to do this and modify it in a way that it will not actually stack the image. So you won't end up with a final stack, but you'll still end up with your registered files in the process directory. So I want to show you how to do that real quick. So on Windows, the default scripts that come installed with Cyril are located in on the C drive under program files, serial, and then scripts. Now, technically you can make the change to this script, but it's not recommended to do that. These are scripts that were installed with serial and they could be replaced by serial during an update. So we're not gonna make any changes. We're gonna make a copy of this script. So I'm just going to copy the OSC pre-processing script. And then I have a folder on my C drive under astrophotography serial scripts and I just called it modified scripts just for this tutorial you can name it whatever you want or if you already have a folder for additional scripts that you've downloaded you could place it in there as well that's fine we're going to paste it in the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it because when we load this in serial we'll now have two scripts called OSC pre-processing and you just don't want to get confused with which one you're going to be running so we'll just call this OSC preprocessing underscore plot. Open it up, any ASCII text editor will do. I use Notepad++, but on Windows, the standard Notepad program will work just as well for you. With the file open, you wanna scroll down to the end. You wanna locate the line that says stack calibrated lights to result.fit. So everything from this line here through the save command is what we don't need, right? The first one is what's gonna actually create the stack and then it loads the stack in the serial, it does a mirror flip for us, and then it saves it for us. So you can either just completely delete these lines or better yet, just comment the lines out. And what I mean by commenting the lines out is, as you can see here where it says stack calibrated lights to result.fit, there is a pound symbol in front of it. Well, hashtag, right? Pound symbol, I know I'm showing my age. But when Cyril comes across that symbol, it will ignore everything on that line. So instead of deleting, we can just simply tell it to ignore the lines that we do not need. And I do it this way because maybe I want to go back in later and restore these commands. If I deleted them, I got to go digging and find out what they are. But now I still have them there. They're just not active. So once you make those changes, click save, and then we can close the file. And then again, we want to make sure our path where this script was copied to is configured within Cyril. So I'm just going to come up to the top here and right click and copy that path. Then back over into Cyril, get scripts and make sure that that path is in place under my script storage directories. In my case it is, because I was doing some previous testing. Click the rescan button, click apply, and now if we come up into scripts and serial scripts, there's our original that comes from serial, and then down the bottom here is the modified one that we just saved. So now when I run this, what you'll end up with in your working directory will just look like this. You won't have your stack. You'll just have your process and your masters. And then that entire workflow that I just showed you going through the plot tab and stacking tab, this just will save you a little bit of time because you don't have to wait and sit through the stacking process. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Like I said, this has always been around in serial, just kind of, I don't want to call it a hidden feature, but unless you were doing things manually, you probably never came across it. I want to say thanks to all my members, both here on YouTube and on Buy Me a Coffee. I appreciate everybody's support. And thanks to all of you who have made donations, who shared my video, with others. It really helps the channel grow. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Once again, thanks for your time. We'll see you on the next video in clear skies.